Lights Out brings you stories of the supernatural and the supernormal, dramatizing the fantasies and mysteries <coughs> of the unknown. We tell you this frankly, that if you wish to avoid the excitement and tension of these imaginative plays, to turn off your radios now. Lights out, everybody. Consequently, we'll be covered with ice caps, hundreds. 
hundreds of miles thick. <laughs> and the other side of the Earth that is facing the sun will be heated to the point where everything is burnt down to a great desert of red hot sand and then rocks. Right for the sandwiches, Doctor. Yeah, and the sun. We all have Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, now, where was I? Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, that is not all. The, the, uh, oh. In between the hot side of the earth and the cold side of the earth, right. there will be a sort of a twilight zone, not directly affected by the blasting heat of the sun. But if you think future man can live in this section, you think again. Life would be impossible. Great, tearing hurricanes. Moving hundreds of miles an hour will will blow from the sunny side of the earth to the cold side, never stopping until finally, after hundreds of years, the earth itself would be frozen, the air would be frozen, and there can be no more winds. I say that's a uh, that's quite a picture. Yeah. Yeah, and you may quote me further as saying that the one thing Leon the Alberts is absolutely positive of, and that is that the end of the world from mankind's standpoint will not occur for perhaps 200 million years. And when this catastrophe does occur, uh, excuse me, yeah, come in. Oh, um, I beg your pardon, Dr. Alberts. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, what is it? <coughs> it's, uh, uh, it's, uh, the, oh, the ladies, sir. The wives of the trustees. Yeah, there, yeah, there. Yeah. They want you to show them the, um, make, make, make it a heart. The mechanical heart. I knew it, I knew it. Why is it, Mr. Lewis, that the first time someone comes to the laboratory, the only thing they want to see is the mechanic, mechanical heart. <laughs> Well, well, after all, Doctor, the idea of a heart beating away and having life outside of the body is, is rather intriguing. Yeah, but this is a, a research institute, not a sideshow. Well, uh, shall I tell the ladies you won't think so? Who says I won't? Come along, Lewis. You will now see me in my annual role as, how do you say it? Sideshow Barker. <laughs> <laughs> well, Come along. well, all right, Doctor, but as long as you give me the rest of the story on the end of the world as soon as you're through. The end of the world? What does that matter when the wives of the trustees want to be entertained? Ah, women. Women, women, women. They make me sick like I have never been sick before. <laughs> now, ladies, you remember last year when we came to see the lab? Now I can explain. 
If you will step closer and look to where I am pointing, you will see inside this cart container is an isolated, extirpated chicken heart. <laughs> oh, I see it now. Well, right, isn't it fascinating? Oh my goodness, it does look like a real chicken. Ah, look at that. that don't, oh, touch. It looks like a chicken heart because that is what it is. Now, the chicken for whom this heart was a vital organ is dead already 17 months. But here in this apparatus, this heart has gone on an independent existence. It, uh, beating away as if it were still part of a living fowl. Can you imagine that? Of all things! Unbelievable! Yeah, now, do not. Don't. Through these tubes, as you can see, a liquid is flowing to and from the heart. This liquid is called Hartman's Solution. <laughs> <laughs> and it simulates tissue fluid. You mean that it artificially replaces the bloodstream? Yeah, the solution replaces the blood. But doctor, then what keeps all of this artificial blood circulating? Ah, I will show you. I open this case and now you see. What? It's a tiny electronically driven pump. Yeah, it is what we call an alternating synchronized pump. Please do not touch. It drives the life fluid through the heart at 60 beats per minute. And so, the heart will go on living and on living even though the body it came from is long dead. Now, you don't mean to say, doctor, that uh, this little old chicken heart will go on living forever. If we keep the serum circulating through the heart, fresh! and at the proper temperature, there is no reason why this heart cannot outlive a thousand generations of us all. <laughs> in fact, if this device had existed in the time of all say Napoleon, we might be standing here, standing here watching the heart of the Frenchman beating away as as it did 168 years ago. Now, Napoleon's heart? Imagine that. But, Doctor, this heart isn't actually living and beating in here, is it? Most Surely. definitely. Shh. I, oh, Nancy. I will show so I will place the stethoscope against the chamber, <laughs> and so you will hear. Ah, so, now, listen. <laughs> Ah, so, now you have heard. Hey, Thank you very much. Careful driving home. What did you want? Well, let me listen, Dr. Albert. I want to hear you. Please, please. 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 Please, the experiment is ruined. Oh, oh, we see to that no, it's the lady. We are not going to do it. Get out! Oh, you have ruined oh, it. Oh, oh, have oh, ruined oh, it. Oh, I'm worth you, Sidney Bibby. Get out of here. I don't care for my life. I don't want you out of here. Get out! Get out! Louis, you get out too. Get out! 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 Send him in, send him in. <laughs> Good morning, Dr. Alberts. Well, what is it? Uh, it's about the uh, symposium. I need the rest of the material. Symposium? Yes, you remember your, uh, your discussion on the end of the world for that uh, Sunday feature story we are running. Uh, um, you remember, you were, uh, interrupted? Yeah, I remember only too well those women. 
Yes, well, uh, I was thinking about it over the weekend. Uh, I, I mean, I was wondering uh, whether or not you were able to salvage anything. Salvage? You think there's an experiment so delicate as with a living heart that can be salvage? I, no! The experiment is ruined. Ruined! Oh, yes, it, it was unfortunate, wasn't it? Oh, it was a lesson. Hereafter, as long as I am director of this institute, there will be no more sightseers to the laboratory. This is a place Dr. of scientific Albert. research. Dr. This Albert. is a place that... Dr. What? Dr. What Dr. is it? Your insight will see you, Doctor. <laughs> Thank you. Dr. Albert, come quickly! Yeah, hot, hot, quickly, quickly. where? What is the matter with you? Oh. Is there a fire or something? Oh, you remember, you sent me to clean up that mess that those ladies left. Yeah, well, well. Well, I can't open the door. I just came. If you cannot open the door, why bother me about it? Close the janitor. What is the matter with you? Uh, but it's something else, Doctor. It's something terrible. Terrible? What are you talking about? Oh, I don't know what it is, sir, but, oh. The odor of it, it just fills the corridor. And the sound of it, you can hear it through the door. Is everybody going crazy around here? Do you hear what I have to put up with, Mr. Lewis? The door to the lab is stuck, and so this man goes crazy. No, doctor, you just have to come see for yourself. Yeah, yeah, I will come. Come along, Lewis, and perhaps in between acting as nursemaid to crazy women and nursemaid to crazy laboratory assistants, perhaps I can give you that article on the end of the world. <laughs> oh, can you smell it, doctor? Can you smell it? I don't know. You, Lewis? There is a peculiar odor in here, isn't there? Ah, there is a simple explanation for this. Those women last Friday. <laughs> they knock over the tables, the chemicals. I am so disgusted, as you say. I drove them out and locked the door. Well, we are here, young man. Opens the door. Well, I can't. I can't. <laughs> you see, there's something holding it back. It's, um, oh well, it's solved. It's yielded. Oh, 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 it's something living, Doctor. Oh, listen to it. Oh, listen. Hey, Gully, I want to. Put your ear to the door and listen. Yeah, yeah, I will listen. Lewis, 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 listen, your ear, close to the door. <laughs> By God. Lub dub, lub dub, lub dub, huh? <laughs> what is back there, Doctor? What in heaven's name is back there? Come away from the door! <laughs> what is it, Doc? Hand me the fire axe off the wall. Yes, sir. It sounded like some sort of a pump, didn't it, sir? Eh? What? I said it sounded like some sort of a pump, didn't it, sir? Yeah, a pump! The fire axe, Doctor. Uh, uh, <laughs> do you want me to break down the door? No, no, you fool. <laughs> the hinges knock the pins out, and the door will fall open. Here, let me. <coughs> there, now the other one. <coughs> now, stand to one side. <clears throat> What are you going to do? The edge of the axe in here, and one side, please. <laughs> Without the hinges, the door will fall open. Ah, so, there. Now, here it comes. Stand back! Oh, Dr. Albus! Mutter in Himmel. Doctor, that huge piece of flesh on the floor, where did it come from? Where? It's a, listen to it, Doctor, it's, it's pulsing, pulsing. It, it, it is flesh, isn't it? I mean, it is flesh. Yeah, it is flesh. <laughs> a living mass of meat. As, as large as, 
as, as large as, as a chair. <laughs> what is it, doctor? What? It cannot be, and yet it is. Flesh pulsing. It is the chicken heart! <laughs> Some of those chemicals might have fallen onto the heart <laughs> and caused it to grow and keep on living without a bloodstream. It is the only possibility. But there must be no newspaper publicity, my friend. I need time, peace, quiet to analyze, investigate. If I can discover the secret of this independent existence. It may be within my power to, to do wonders for medical science. Wait a minute, doctor, wait. <laughs> wait. <laughs> what is that noise? Do doctor, help us. Oh, come quickly. Yeah, what, what is wait. it? Quickly where? Oh, it's, it's the heart. The heart? Yeah. It's, a, it's feeding. Oh, feeding? Feeding. It is not possible. <laughs> well, come see for yourself. It is not possible, I tell you. It is not possible. <laughs> oh, jeez, what did you think happened? No, I just turned it I it was Dr. Atkinson. Dr. Atkinson said something about it? All right, quiet. Now, quiet, everybody. Stand away from the door, please. Now, then, now, uh, one of you, uh, you, uh, Dr. Atkins. Uh, what is the matter? Well, I'm not quite sure, Doctor. I was standing in the doorway here discussing this with one of the other men of the staff. When out of the mass of flesh, a long tentacle of protoplasm thrust itself upward. You mean out of the heart? With my own eyes, I saw it. It moved out until it reached that case of white mice there, and then it... It wrapped itself round one of the mice. Oh, go on. Well, then, then the tentacle retracted itself, and the entire mass of flesh engulfed the mouse. The moment the mouse disappeared into the tissue, the appearance of the entire mass changed completely. Look, Dr. Albert, look for yourself! Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I see. The, the color is changing. Uh, a reddish, gray, blue. Oh, look, Dr. Albert, the edges of it is growing, growing. 
crawling. No, it is not crawling. It is growing. Growing! <laughs> Una vetta, what was that? Oh, geez, one of the stenographer's faces. Well, take her away. Yeah. Everybody, stand back, please. What are we going to do, Doctor? It's already <laughs> twice the size that it was. Unbelievable. Hyperplasia at so rapid a rate. It cannot be. But how can it grow like that, Doctor? Just, just a mass of flesh. What's it growing on? What? Oh, look, on the center of it! It's a tentacle of flesh, like before! Oh, ah, I see, a pseudopod. <laughs> like from a simple organism, a reaching out. What? What is it reaching for? It is groping, groping along the floor. Dr. Atkins, stand back, it might... Look out! Oh, 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 oh. Dr. Atkins! <laughs> Sucked him in. Oh. oh, look out! Another one! Another tentacle! No! Oh. Run! Run for your life! Ah. 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 Seem to be any way to stop it. 
No, 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 I'm telling you. I saw it with my own eyes. The corridors are choked with living, crawling flesh. I'm drunk. No, I'm not drunk. I'm telling you the truth. <laughs> that little piece of flesh has grown until now it is jamming the building with flesh all inside the space of an hour. No, no, Chief, you've got to believe me. You've just got to. It's, it's the greatest news story of a generation, and here you are arguing with me. No, 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 Chief, you've got to believe me. You've just got to. Oh. Captain, Captain, you must believe me. I tell you, the only hope is to burn that building to the ground at once. Now, wait a minute, Doc. Wait a minute. Just take it easy. Burn it to the ground. It is the only hope. Believe me, it is. That tissue is undergoing constant mitosis. It is proliferating at so rapid a rate that it has choked the building with living flesh. Burn, I tell you, burn! Oh, stop, wait a minute, take it easy. I put in a call for the chief and he'll be here any minute. All this don't make sense, I tell you, it don't. You don't fool you. There now, is no wait time to waste. There man. is no minute! There is no second! That thing must be destroyed now while it is confined! Oh, don't you understand? For some reason I cannot even imagine. That flesh is doubling in size every hour. Do you know what that means? You don't know. You. In one hour, it will be twice the size it is now. And long before that, it will break open the building with the force of its pressure. What is that? Yeah, what the pressure that? of the growing flesh will thrust this building aside as if it were paper. Ah, oh, and then it will be free in the street, you hear me? Free in the street, and the zootopods, with those tentacles of protoplasm stretching out, it feeds on human flesh. Do you hear me? On flesh! That building must be burned and the people kept back. Burn the back, I tell you, burn the back! The building's making some kind of oh, deal. It's a building! See, the walls cracking! I warned you! All right, I warned you! Inside, everybody just get back! Now it is too late, too late. The flesh is free. Flesh. 
Within two weeks, the entire United States. Oh, you call out the National Guard. I say call out the entire United States Army. Blast that thing off the earth. Bombs, artillery, it is the only way, gentlemen. It is the only way to save the earth. <laughs> Dr. Albers? Yeah, I'm all right. <laughs> yeah. I sure am glad I located you. I stalled as long as I could. Another 10 minutes, and we wouldn't have been able to take off. That, that blasted protoplasm, or whatever it is, was sucking at the wheels of the plane by the time we left the ground. Yeah, I saw <laughs> Well, 5,000 feet. Well, we'll cruise around up here for a while and then head west. It will do no good, eh? <laughs> I have told you, like I have told the others, that flesh, it grows like a mathematical progression. Faster, faster, greater, greater. There is no hope. In the name of all that's rational, Doctor, you don't mean that it'll go on and on until, until there is no place more to go. In the Institute, when it was small, then there was hope. Fire would have killed it. But now, what can man do? It is like telling the sea to go back. You can't beat it, Doctor. It must start growing sometime. It must. Oh, look below you, Lewis. That gray blanket of evil is covering everything. There is no hope. None. See how the roads go black with men and women and their children running for their lives. See how the protoplasmic gray engulfs them. Here's a lamentation. Just stop it! Just stop it, Doctor! Stop it! Just please, just stop it! We'll get away, I tell you, we'll get away. The government! Yes, the government! They'll send bombing planes and blast it off the earth. Yes, that's it. Bombing planes. Poison gas! No hope. No hope. It would be like bombing the ocean. Meanwhile, the, fle the flesh goes on and on. It is too late. No! No, I tell you, no! You see that little man down there? He did not believe his doom either until it engulfed him. No, oh, Louis. Do you remember only a handful of days ago, you asked me for my prophecy on the end of the world? Do you remember my answer? Oh, 
such a scholarly sounding prophecy. The cessation of the Earth's rotation. <laughs> such mighty sounding astronomical theories. <laughs> but look below you, Lewis, that is reality. The end of all humankind. <laughs> Not in the glory of interstellar combustion. Not in the peace of light, cold, silence. But in that down there, creeping, grasping flesh. <laughs> it is a joke, eh, Lewis? A great joke. <laughs> it's the joke of the cosmos. <laughs> The end of all humankind because of a chicken heart. <laughs> no, no, we won't die. I can't die. I I'll find a safe landing somewhere. I'll, I'll find a place where we can, uh, where we can. Oh, the motor! It's cut out. Oh, oh, we're in a spin. I can't get out of it. Doomed! I told you. No. No! Doomed all humankind and we win them! Doomed! No! We're falling right into it! Into the flesh! <laughs> Light Scout, brought to you every Wednesday, written especially for radio by Arch Oboler from our Chicago studios. Thank you. 